Hey everyone, and welcome back to another day in my life as a data scientist here in Sydney. Today I'll be sharing with you some of the realities of working in tech, as well as some tips I've gathered over the years on how to get promoted quickly. For those of you that are new here, my name is Vivian and I've been working in data for the past nine years and I recently changed roles. My new role is super fast paced and very meeting intensive. Today, I started my day pretty early, headed in for a morning run with some colleagues and it's been a great way to socialize and get in some steps. I often forget just how beautiful Sydney is. I usually start work around 9.15 and I'm meeting free until 10am, which gives me some time to prepare for my busy day ahead. This morning, I'm writing a quick update to my PM with some high level numbers from a feature that we recently shipped and then I'm jotting down a to-do list for the day. My one tip is to try to pick just one thing that you want to achieve. It sounds super simple, but having that one focus makes a huge difference when the rest of the day gets really busy. At 10am, I've got my first product team stand-up of the day. I'm a product data scientist, which means that we are partially embedded within our product team. Now these stand-ups are really cross-functional. You've got product managers, engineers, designers, and data all in the same room. And we basically talk through what everyone's focused on for the day, what the team is shipping, and what questions we want data to help answer next. And because things move so quickly, a lot of this time is just alignment and making sure we are all solving the right problems. I have a small break at 10.30 and by now I am starving, so feel free to watch me eat some beef jerky. Working in tech means that there are a lot of snacks and I'm trying to only eat the healthier options. I'm spending this time updating some local dashboards. My company operates in four month cycles and we're currently at the beginning of a cycle, so unfortunately there's a lot of dashboarding and ensuring the metrics are set up for our stakeholders to visualize. This is definitely not the most glamorous or exciting work for a staff level data scientist, but it is step one in ensuring data visibility across the team. Now I know a lot of you watching this are aspiring data professionals, and one piece of advice I would give is to not get too caught up in role titles, because the same title can mean very different things across companies and even within the same team. In my case, I joined my current role as a staff level data scientist, but I'd say that about half of my role is actually product analytics, working very closely with product managers, engineers, and designers, digging into user behavior, defining metrics, and helping my product team make better data-driven decisions. And then maybe the other half is more traditional data science, but the product focus really shapes how I spend my day. Another big shift I've seen over the last five years in particular is how much AI has changed my day-to-day. Traditional modeling projects that used to take me months can now be done in one to two weeks using tools like Cursor. Engineers and PMs can also vibe code simple models themselves, which means there is a lot less time spent on the technicalities and much more emphasis on problem solving, product thinking, and building a MVP that teams can actually implement. Now this definitely took some getting used to for me. I am very type A and a bit of a perfectionist, especially when it comes to numbers. So quick and dirty solutions used to stress me out a lot, but I've had to adapt to thinking more in terms of the 80-20 principles, getting something good enough in front of the users quickly, learning from it, and then improving it over time. Is it? Oh, yeah. After demolishing two huge plates of tacos and having the worst food coma of them all, I am back in Looker doing some pull requests. Today I'm updating a few models and refining metrics that our product team relies on weekly. There's definitely a pretty big learning curve here as this is my first role using Looker, but my advice is to just get in there and build. And to save you from watching me code for the next hour or so, I thought that I would share with you some career advice that I wish I knew earlier on that'll help you stand out and get promoted faster. I hope to make my videos as informative as possible so you can always take away something actionable. One thing that took me way too long to realize is that perception really matters. I used to think that if I just worked hard, everything would eventually fall into place. But how people see your work and understand your impact makes a huge difference, believe it or not. If you're new to a role like I was, the first six months are really defining. That is when people start forming opinions about you in their minds. And in a lot of companies, you quickly get bucketed either as a high performer or not. One really practical thing that helped me was sending my manager short weekly updates. Just a few bullet points on what I had completed and what business outcome it led to. Here is something I sent to my manager last month as an example. And another big shift for me was learning to work smarter, not just harder. I was such a people pleaser early on in my career and I said yes to pretty much everything. But these days, instead of taking on every task, I would prioritize the work that actually had real business impact 
and that has made such a huge difference to my career. It's now about 1.20 p.m. and I've just been pulled into a quick impromptu huddle with my product manager to talk through some reporting metrics. This happens a lot in my current role and while it's where a lot of impact happens, it's also where you have to practice setting boundaries. Being helpful and responsive is important, but data teams often get looped in last with urgent requests and if you're not careful, everything will become a fire drill. Learning when to jump in, when to push back, and when to reset expectations is honestly a huge part of stakeholder management and something that I'm still working on. I forgot to film, but I had a 1.30 coffee catch up with a software engineer in my product team, and we just went for a walk around the city and got a cup of coffee. By the time that I got back, I had around an hour before my last block of meetings for the day. Here, I got my PRs approved, and I also updated my dashboards along with some requests from my product manager earlier in the day. I then jumped into a meeting room for a call with a colleague on handover of a machine learning model that he built to identify spam accounts. And lastly, I had a quick chat with another of my colleagues on how we can both upskill in AI together. And finally, it is 4 p.m. and I'm done with meetings. I usually try to block out some focus time towards the end of my day. Today, I'm working on a SQL query, looking at user engagement and trying to understand how people are interacting with a new feature that we just rolled out. These features will become part of a churn model so I can identify what is potentially causing a user to not return and therefore improve our product. I am heading off around 5.45 today, it's been a very long day, and one of the perks of coming into the office is that there will often be leftovers from lunch, so I'm bringing a few boxes back home for my family. Home time! Took home so much leftovers. My daughter dog commute is around 45 minutes in peak hour, and by the time that I get off, my doggie is waiting for me at the bus stop. I am still living at home with my parents, so there will always be dinner ready once I get home, and I'm so blessed for that. The sunset was too pretty today, so we drove out to the Asian grocer to pick up some snacks before heading home, rewinding, and playing a few rounds of mahjong. By around 11pm, it is finally time for bed. After a shower, washing my hair, and doing my skincare, I am so ready to switch off. I actually upgraded my bed recently, and I've been sleeping on the lumbar cloud mattress from Origin, which they kindly sent to me. I've never owned a king bed or a proper high quality mattress before, and I genuinely didn't realize how big of a difference it would make. It's supportive without being too firm, really comfortable, and honestly makes my sleep feel like I'm in a hotel. And even my ultra human ring agrees, you can literally see the improvement in my sleep score since switching. Setup was also really easy. The mattress came vacuum packed and just expanded on its own. I also upgraded to Origin's timber wood bed frame and I love how solid and minimal it feels. Now this was also completely tool free to assemble, doesn't creak at all and it's made my room feel so much more put together. When your days are this full on, good sleep becomes non-negotiable. Thank you again to Origin for sponsoring today's video. I will leave all the details and my discount code in the description if you wanted to go check them out. And with that, I will be heading to bed. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.